Hi everyone, I am the Tipsy Spinster and today is the very last day in the first annual Spin Together competition. I'm out at Alpaca Pines Fiber Mill in Poplar Grove. In my glass is a lovely vegan stout from the local vegan pub. Today was one of those days it was sunny, kind of warm, kind of windy. It was one of those weird fall days that it's not quite pumpkin spice, but it's not quite cocktail. I went with beer, and I'm really glad I chose this for today's spin. I want to talk just a little bit about e-spinners and making and how they make really good travel spindles. So the e-spinner that I have is an electric eel nano. It's the second iteration from Dreaming Robots. It was part of a Kickstarter campaign. And if you scroll back through some of my earlier videos, I did do a video on the first edition of this. So now I wanted to talk just a little bit about this upgrade, the second edition. It's very similar in style. There were some things that were updated though. The nice thing about it is it fits perfectly in this vintage looking little makeup travel case. This is actually a knitting case from Jimmy Bean's Wool. It's from the company Namaste. And one of the reasons why I like it is when you open it up, it has an open cavity. It has this pouch that comes with it and it just hooks with magnets up at the top and it holds all of the extra bobbins as well as my um, guide and some of the other information. There's a little notebook in there for taking notes on fiber. It also houses the accessory, which is actually a notions box that came from Namaste as well. And the notions box is nice because it holds the cord that plugs into the wall, but it also houses the battery. And that's one of the things that I really like about this little spinner. You can either plug it into a wall or you can run it off any, almost any standard battery pack. And that's one of the things that I really liked about it. The Nano came in two colors. It came in a vibrant purple. And for those of you that know me, you know that purple is not one of my favorite colors. So I was really excited when Maurice also came out with the charcoal color. What you get when you order the wheel you, of course, get the wheel, and it comes with three bobbins of your choice. The standard colors are ivory, teal, and purple. And then if you scroll through the page, there are a couple suppliers where you can get different colored ones. So as you can see, I added a copper one to sort of go with my nautical theme on this one. And the way that I accented it, it's just with um, tattoos that I can either take off or I can change, which is one of the things that I really liked about it as well. I can change the look anytime I want. It has the two flyer arms and it has two sets of hooks, guide hooks. It also comes with a really nice little orifice hook. I added the beads and the octopus because it goes along with the theme. But the cool thing, there's magnets built into the base, so you're never going to lose your orifice hook. It um, attaches and it sits right on and it doesn't move, which is really, really nice. It also comes with an orifice reducer, so you've got a little bit of a smaller space to guide your yarn into. Now, when you look at it, you'll see that it does have the two standard size whorls on each end of the bobbin, which is a little bit different. Most of the bobbin whorls, this is how you gauge your ratios and things like that. When I started spinning with this wheel, I learned that your ratios were actually determined by the speed at which you were spinning. So now I have it at a very low speed, and this low speed, of course, is not putting in very much twist. So as I draw back and turn it off, my plied yarn is going to be a really light, fluffy, woolen yarn. Now, if I turn the speed up a little bit and add more twist to it, I'm going to end up with a tighter. Now, the prep of this is, is 
worsted anyway. But as you can see, that tighter twist gives me more of a worsted, tighter looking yarn. Now, of course, in this case, I'm not going to get a true woolen because of how it's prepped, but I can mimic it a little bit. Now, the other nice thing with this, the slow speed, new spinners often have a problem navigating the feet movement with the drafting out and trying to figure out where that drafting triangle is and getting the speed right and getting your feet and your hands all to work at the same time. I went back and forth for a little while on this wheel. There has been some debate as to whether or not this is a good wheel for a new spinner. And I would have to say after playing with it for a little while, I think this would be an excellent wheel for a new spinner because you can gauge how fast you want this wheel to spin. So you can start out very, very slow and really get the feel for how thin or thick you want your yarn and then you can just feed it directly in. One of the other things comes with, it does come with the brake band, and one of the ideas that came up, which I really liked, was the idea of putting beads on the end of your brake band just to help keep it a little bit more stable in the hooks. And that's one of the hacks that I, I immediately uh, jumped onto because I really thought that was a neat idea and it was a neat way to keep that tension. One of the other ones, which I haven't done yet, was putting beads on the end of your guides just to keep your yarn from tangling around. One of the things that I have noticed when I spin thicker, and this wheel does a great job with both thin and thick, although it really, really, really likes to spin thin, which is great for me because that's kind of my go-to weight anyway. But I noticed when I spin thicker, what happens is the yarn will have a tendency to bounce over the hook and then it kind of all coils up at the front and doesn't get pulled in. So I feel like putting a bead on here is going to help that just a little bit. So as you can see, I already have a full bobbin. I'm looking forward to the plying part of this. And I've got a little bit more fiber out here. I'm going to spend the rest of the afternoon spinning this up and one of the lovely things about Alpaca Pines, they don't just sell fiber and products from Purdue, Peru and Ecuador, but they also sell local crafts as well, such as this lovely mug, which has this fun saying on it. And I'll be taking this one home with me because after I get done spinning, knit is definitely going to happen. So thanks so much for tuning in to this brief little overview of the Electric Eel Nano. And I hope that for those of you that were part of the Spin Together competition, I hope you found wonderful ways to spin with friends or find ways to spin on this final day. As always, thanks for tuning in and happy spinning. <laughs>